I heard from a really whiny anti-prepper recently who was complaining and thinking that they were pointing out um, a flaw in our preparedness advocacy. And they were saying, well, you're not even really serious about your prepping because you run a website. How are you going to run your website uh, after a collapse? You're not going to be able to run a website. How are you going to make money after the collapse? You must not even be serious. You're just acting. It's all an act. It's all just, just click, what do I call it? Clickbait. It's clickbait. Clickbait for your website. <laughs> how are you going to run your website after the collapse? Hey, um, Mr. or Mrs. Anti-Prepper, we're not running the website after the collapse. Don't you get it? When it, when it all comes down, you think I'm going to be spending time blogging? Doing recordings, posting them to YouTube? No. Are you kidding me? I'm going to be protecting property and family and, and uh, getting out the stored food. You know? <laughs> These people. Uh, don't you know that everybody who's into prepping already has a plan of how they're going to survive after the internet goes down or after a power grid or after an EMP attack or after a nuclear war or after a ground invasion of enemy troops or after a pandemic. Don't you know we already have those plans in place? We don't need the internet. We're doing the internet to try to wake people up like you. <laughs> You're the reason we're doing it. After the internet goes down, there's no more reason. Then we just hunker down and, and work to survive and help create a safe community, help as many neighbors as we can. You know, protect life and property and uh, ride it out. And then maybe one day we have an Internet again. And then those of us who are still alive can talk about, wow, look how few of us there are now. <laughs> those whiny city people, they're not around anymore, are they? You whiny, whiny anti-preppers. Nah, they won't. They, they won't make it uh, through much of anything. So, yeah, but just on a more serious note, if if that's even possible here in the Health Ranger report. Um, <laughs> whiny, whiny anti-preppers. It's like, it's like um, what's, the, what's the woman's name in Terminator 2? You're already dead. You're already dead. I forgot the character's name, played by Linda Hamilton, right? And she's already seen the future, and she's trying to warn them, warn people, you're already dead because Skynet goes goes berserk and sets off the nukes and then you know there's judgment day and i'm not saying that's going to happen but uh funny thing that a lot of scientists say that's exactly what's going to happen uh stephen hawking elon musk um i don't know many others actually are warning about the rise of ai artificial intelligence and that as we keep pursuing ai systems eventually they're going to decide that uh hey humanity is not that uh, good at getting anything done let's kind of weed them out here with our control systems shut off the water if you shut off the water in america you kill like 70 percent of the people all, all a robot just has to decide one day oh, we don't need these 70 percent uh, turn off the water you know it's like two weeks later you're down to 30 percent of the population because People are morons. They don't know what to do without water. They don't even know where to find water. They don't even have a bucket to carry water. They don't know how to filter water. They don't know how to purify water. I know, it's crazy. I mean, you can purify water with a plastic bottle and some sunlight, but people don't even know that. So, of course, you, you cut off the water, people die. And, you know, someday the AI systems are going to just do that, probably. Or at least that's what we're being warned about. But God forbid, if you're a prepper... Well, you're a crazy person. You're some kind of kook. You're, 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 what? You have more than two days supply of food in your cupboard? You're some kind of crazy person. Tinfoil hat wearing food prepper. You own gold and silver? My God. You should be like the rest of us normal people who have paper money with green ink. Right? That's the, You've heard that? Hope I'm not going too far with my uh, character impressions here, but that, that, that's the way they sound to me. It's sort of judgmental anti-prepper loons. You shouldn't have gold and silver. How dare you have dehydrated food? 
there's something wrong with dehydrated food. You know, <laughs> they're, just, they're just people who are just ready to die. They're like looking up to the sky. God, please kill me, you know, because I don't know how to even uh, survive on this planet. So just take me at the first opportunity. I'm an anti-prepper. I'm a, I'm a conformist, obedient sheeple ready to run off the cliff and plunge into the abyss below. But please take me on the way down so that I don't experience the impact. That's, uh, that's the way these people are, anti-preppers. They are, they're really the laughing stock of the cosmos. And they, technically, if you believe in, uh, let's say, natural selection, if you believe in the Darwinist theory of evolution, then you know that those who are most fit to survive are the ones who do survive, and then they contribute to the future gene pool of the species and go on to... Uh, to live and reproduce and and have offspring and so on. And so anti-preppers are going to win the Darwin Award, which is given to individuals who remove themselves from the gene pool in the most interesting and exciting ways, such as uh, fishing with dynamite on a frozen lake. You (laughs) You probably read that one. A lot of people have won the Darwin Award, but I think a lot more could really qualify for that Darwin Award You know, the lights go out one day, the power grid goes down. It's going to be like 150 million people who are just ready to win that Darwin Award because they're like, Huh? You mean the lights aren't working? You mean there's no water coming out of the tap? You mean I can't buy groceries at the grocery store? You mean I can't fill my car with gasoline? Well, let's just wait, honey, and the lights will come back on. They always do. They always do. Those kind of people, <laughs> just just begging to die. <laughs> you could just go down, up and down the homes of the neighborhood with little po- posters. Darwin Award winner, <laughs> staple it to the door. Darwin Award winner, <laughs> staple it to their door. Next house, Darwin Award runner up. <laughs> yeah, you're going to win too. Just go on down the neighborhoods right there in the suburbs or, or apartment to apartment in the cities. Yep, you're going to win. You're going to win. You're a winner. You're a winner. Yes, it's politically correct. There are no losers here in this town. You're all winners. You're all winning the Darwin Award together. It's a community thing. It's a collectivism thing. We're going to do it all together, or none of us are going to do it at all. We're going to just hold hands and win that award together when the lights go out. That's what they're going to do. This cracks me up. This totally cracks me up. So these anti-prepper whiners, the great news is you're not going to have to hear them whining for very long. (laughs) Right? That's the great news. They're kind of annoying today. You know, they're kind of trolling the internet, making fun of people. Ah, you people, you got got ammo and you got a gun. Well, you're going to need a gun. Uh, Probably to uh, defend our food from people like you, basically, is the answer. When you become a crazed, hungry, zombie-like being and you're trying to break into my house, that's why I need the gun, buddy. So you're going to win the Darwin Award. I'm going to protect my family and my food. Got it? Mm-hmm. That's how it's going to work. But they don't get it. They don't get it because they're just totally loopy, the mass medicated, you know, drinking the fluoride Kool-Aid, taking the psychiatric drugs, brain damage with chemotherapy. Oh, get another flu shot vaccine. Don't worry. There's only enough mercury in there to disable about 10 trillion brain cells. But, hey, who cares? What do you need brain cells for? Government tells you what to think. You know, CNN tells you what's true. Who needs brain cells? So what does that matter, right? But anti-preppers, they're, they're, <laughs> they're hilarious, man. I tell you, a good business to be in is going to be like cheap gravestones for anti-preppers. You know, if you could, if you could well, who's going to buy them, actually? Because usually their family members go with them. You know, they like to go together. So who's even going to buy those? Maybe that's not such a great business idea. But uh, speaking of business ideas, by the way, on a practical note, there are some great businesses that you can run uh, after a collapse or during a, a collapse. And you may not have thought about this, and actually this is what I had intended to get to. I'll get into it in more detail in the next uh, segment. But there's those of us who are, who, we talk about prepping, you know, and, and we encourage prepping and we encourage self-reliant living. We have also, most of us in, in any case, 
have also developed business plans for a post-collapse scenario. We've acquired skills. You know, skills, actual skills. I know, I know you younger generation, have you're not familiar with that term, but skills means you can actually do something. Uh, not just tweet something, but actually do something with your hands in the real world, like, I don't know, fix a bicycle tire. Yeah, change that tire. Fix a bicycle chain. Weld two pieces of metal together using electricity. I know these are alien concepts to the, those of you who live on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, and that's your entire world, and you've never accomplished anything outside your social media other than, let's say, masturbation. But for those of you who want to go beyond that realm of doing things with your hands, there are things in the real world that actually matter. You know, you could learn how to, well, let's say, milk a cow. That's kind of a transitional skill that you can get into right there. And after you learn how to milk a cow, well, you might be able to learn how to, I don't know, um, harvest eggs that chickens lay and make an omelet. You know, you could make an omelet. That would be useful, too, right? Very, very useful stuff. You might be able to learn how to actually, let's say, plant some seeds, grow some food, harvest that food, collect some seeds, grow some more food. Repeat as necessary, or at least as often as you think you're hungry. These are real-world skills that you can have. And real preppers have invested quite heavily in real-world skills that really matter when the lights go out, when the Internet goes down, and DNS no longer resolves IP addresses. You can actually do something in the real world to stay alive and stay healthy. Yeah, Work that well pump, get some water, do something that counts. <laughs> and uh, those who live in the virtual worlds will be uh, absolutely astounded that uh, their their amazing Snapchat skills don't translate into feeding themselves a meal when starvation kicks in. Uh, you can't live off of likes in the real world, okay? And I know you agree with me for listening to this, and this is just entertainment, but it's true, right? It's really true. Uh, in any case... In the next segment, I'm going to talk about actual preparedness businesses that you can run in a collapse that will keep you um, doing well. Stay with me. <laughs> 